morning, everybody. It's Miss Ruth and Sarah. Hi there. We're so happy that you're with us. Um, we are dressed in some special kind of dark clothes today because we are remembering that we had a special historical figure, very important to us, who passed away on, on uh, last Saturday was the funeral, and that was Prince Philip. So Sarah's got her UK leggings on with the, um, the hearts, with the, uh, the uh, Union flag, and I've got my dark clothes on, like the people that were at the funeral uh, that we saw. So I want to talk a little bit about Prince Philip before we go into our, our lesson today. So this is the story that they showed on the TV a lot. And this is uh, Prince Philip in uh, the middle of his life, probably in his early 50s. And he was very interested in children. And that's um, a good thing to be interested in. I'm interested in children. You like children too, don't you, Sarah? Yes, I do. Okay. So he started actually the Duke of Edinburgh Awards in 1956, over 60 years ago. And this is something for kids who aren't necessarily interested in, in group things like going to scouts. They can come up with their own activity and it can be in volunteerism. It can be a skill that they want to develop. There was a young Canadian uh, man who showed his uh, piano skills. Um, he's met with um, Prince Philip over the years and uh, it can be also in um, developing uh, some kind of thing where you're helping uh, with sport, dance, art, things like that. And um, it comes in different levels. So there's um, gold is the last one you'd get, there's bronze and silver. But it's not a competition like that only one person can get it. Many, many people, you can get this award by earning it. And it can take from three months to six months to by the time you get a gold award, it can take several years to do it, and often it ends up with planning a trip overseas. So um, that's one picture I wanted to show you. Um, Prince Philip was just a few weeks from being 100 years old. So this is last year. This was when he turned 99. This was the official picture with Queen Elizabeth of him at his 99th birthday celebration. And you can see that they're both older people now. Queen Elizabeth herself would be 94 in that picture. But I wanted to show a picture of them when they were young. So Queen Elizabeth uh, married Prince Philip when she was 26 or 21 years old, and she became queen when she was 27 years old. So she was a very young woman when she became the queen. And uh, so they only had six years where they were traveling around as not the queen, but as Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip. And their very first trip together was to Canada. Canada has always been an important place for the royal family. Philip has made over, over 60 trips here um, and over um, 40 just on his own. So this is the first trip that they made. And I was looking, I have a lot of memorabilia about England. And this is a special cup that was designed for their trip in 1951. And you'll see that it has two different um, symbols, the pink rose for England and the maple leaf for Canada. And it's all written on the back about the special uh, trip that they had here to Canada in 1951. And in the very center of the cup, it's got the initials E and P. So out of all my things, that's the only one that mentions Philip. So E is Elizabeth and P is Philip. So I thought that was special to show you today. And you may have seen a lot of things about the flag. And the flag is something when I was a child, we didn't have the Canada flag. This was our flag, the Union Jack. And the Union Jack is made with three crosses. I just thought I'd show you those. So it started off looking like this. That's the red cross for England, which is the St. George cross. And the white diagonal one is the Scottish cross on the blue background, that's the St. Andrew cross. And then in 1801, another red thin cross goes across the diagonal of the St. Andrew cross, and that is the St. Patrick cross. So that is the complete UK flag today, and that's the one that Sarah's got on her pants too. So that's something that's easy to make out of a rectangle, making those um, different lines to remember the special time in history. And Prince Philip was also a spiritual man. He uh, chose 
so some verses out of Ecclesiastics to be read and I've chosen this because it has to do with young people today so I just like to read from Ecclesiastics chapter 11 verse 7 light is sweet and it pleases the eyes to see the Sun however many years anyone may live let them enjoy them all you who are young be happy while you are young and let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth so that's what he was very very interested in was the development of youth so I wanted to share that as a teacher so we're going to go to our song now and it's about counting our blessings this is the um, chorus that we're going to sing several times we're going to just listen to two of the verses because they're just a little bit too difficult for us to do today so here we go now and you'll see there's three people walking on a road and that's the famous story of Jesus talking with two friends on the road to Emmaus. Now Emmaus is a little town that is northwest of Jerusalem and those people didn't know that that was Jesus for a little while until they got talking to him and they realized that that was indeed the friend their friend Jesus by the time they got to Emmaus. So Jesus appeared many different times while he was alive here on earth after he had risen from the dead on Easter Sunday. And here's another time that his, some of his friends were out fishing and you can see they've got an empty net. So he called to them and he said, just put your net on the right side of the ship, on the right side of your boat. And they thought, well, that's crazy. We've been fishing all our lives. We should know how to catch fish. But they did what he said. They put the net on the right side of the ship and it became all filled up with fish. In fact, there were so many fish in this net that they couldn't even lift it onto the boat. They had to uh, get close enough to shore and drag it in. And after they, after they did get into shore, Jesus actually cooked some fish and made a meal for them. And then he told them, I'm getting near the end of the time that I'm going to be here on earth with you. I'm going to be going up to, um, to my heavenly father and so a few days later I uh, he did go up to the Mount of Olives and he started to rise into the sky and they're all aghast at what's going on and he, he said uh, tell the people about the love that I have shown you and shown to all all people are the same and it's about spreading the Word of God so as he went up into the sky 
and disappeared. He became smaller and smaller and smaller until he completely disappeared from sight. And then two angels appeared and they said to them, now it is your job to go out and tell the world about the love of Jesus. And so this is the verse for today's story. Jesus said, I am with you always. And that's from Matthew 28, verse 20. Okay, we'll go over to our craft table. So I thought we would use the fisherman story. And by the way, Prince Philip was a naval officer, so the fish story works really well with, with his life story too. I just, um, I just wrote something out. It's not a biblical verse, but it tells the story. As Jesus loved the fisherman, he loves me too. So that could just be glued onto a rectangle. I just cut half a piece, regular size piece of um, colored construction paper in half. And I just had some scrap paper. This actually came from a photo frame, but it's a nice stiff piece, so I saved it. And that goes on there. And then I would just cut some, cut some fish out. I can cut two or three at a time. Let's cut three. So we'll take these three. Okay. And you can draw a picture of the fish on here if, if you like, or if you think you can just cut a fish out. I'm just going to cut a fish out like that. It's a pretty simple shape. Like this. Okay. And then we can take that and hang them from here just by using a hole punch. So I would put um, the hole at this end of the fish, at the mouth end, like that. You can decorate the fish with some lines and put an eye on it and some scales. So just using a marker, you can make each one look a little bit more interesting. Like that. Um, I've got lots of wool around, so I just take the wool, cut pieces of it, and so we can hang that then through the, the hole that we made in the mouth of the fish, and that will go up to this. And so as many fish as you make, you can put holes into here and hang these from the sign. So that gives you a little plaque. Um, it's, it can be hung as a, a mobile because these can flutter around and that's what we can easily do at home today. So I don't think it takes too many fancy um, materials to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to put the glue cap on and go to our prayer today. And it is, dear Jesus, thank you for always being with us. We love you, amen. So have a great week. And I'm Miss Ruth, and I'll see you again next week in the Sunday School Room here at St. James in Waterdown. Bye for now.